Riot's fighting game, Project L, is still in development, but this past Monday, we got the closest look yet at some of the gameplay systems we can expect to see when it finally releases, whenever that is. And frankly, based on everything we're seeing, it's shaping up to be a very interesting game. So even though they showed off some of these systems, there were plenty of things that were actually just shown, not mentioned, so we want to point those out for you too. So whether you're a diehard fighting game fan, or you just want to learn more about this game that's going to have your favorite league champ in it, come along as we explore what we learned from this video and what we can expect from Project L in the future. Six degrees centigrade, it's perfect hoodie weather. That's what I was out in this morning, but you don't have to go without a hoodie because we've got you covered. On our merch store, which I'll drop a link for in the description below, we've got all sorts of esports merch, including some pretty dope hoodies. You could make sure you get your daily reminder to touch grass, or, you know, you could go with the classic, the black esports hoodie, which I personally love. I have one and I wear it all the time. It's just in the wash right now. So again, check out the merch store, link is in the description. All right, back to the video. Okay, so first a quick recap. Project L, I assume that's not going to be the game's final name, is an upcoming fighting game from Riot Games. The game was first teased back at EVO 2019. It looked way different back then too. And now we've gotten a couple small videos along the way, but this new one kind of blows those other ones out of the water. So we know a few things about this game for sure. It's going to be free to play, feature League of Legends characters, and it's a tag fighter. Game director Sean Rivera explained in this newest video. We were originally developing Project L to be a 1v1 game where two champions enter and one emerges victorious. But around two years ago, we made the pivot to a tag team assist-based fighter. Now, if you're not a fighting game fan, and if you're not, please stick with me until the end of the video because I think there are some important things to talk about. If so, then you might not know that a tag fighter means you build a team of characters. In this game, that specifically means two. Normally, when you're playing a game like this, you can call in the assist character while you're controlling your active or point character, and sometimes they have multiple options for what kind of attack they do when they assist you. Or maybe you wanna switch things up so you can tag out your active character for the assist character, they swap places, now you're controlling that other character, and if you've played Marvel vs. Capcom, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's also the genre that gave us one of the hypest plays in esports, the happy birthday, when a character and their assist character are caught in the same combo. Now, the reason I'm explaining this is because the video that we got from Riot this past Monday actually deals a lot with these systems that are usually so inherent to tag fighters. We know Project L will have assist attacks. They're calling them assist actions for now, and it looks like fighters have two options, the normal assist and a charge input, which gives a different attack. Tag fighters often allow you to tag in a new character during a combo. This was, of course, a very classic part of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But Riot showed off a new system that they are calling Handshake Tag, which allows you to swap between your two characters while they are both on the screen. Handshake Tag lets you immediately swap between your point and assist champions as long as they're both on screen. When combined with assist actions, it also lets you set up some really powerful pressure sequences. And you can even use these to extend your combos as well. So it lets you do some pretty cool stuff. Even something as simple as changing which direction your opponent needs to block can be a major game changer. It also seems like the character you switch away from will finish whatever they're doing, including follow-up attacks. So it actually works in much the same way as it did in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it's just that you probably didn't see much of that game because it didn't do well, unfortunately. It's another tool that players can use in a head-to-head -head mental matchup. And while it looks a little confusing at first, I think new players will quickly get the hang of just switching out for defensive or offensive reasons. Another staple of Tag Fighters tends to be long combos, so this game is giving you a way to stop those, and Riot is calling it Dynamic Save. At the start of each match, you have access to your Dynamic Save ability. 
Dynamic Save lets you call your assist champion on screen in an attempt to save your point champion. This is another staple from Tag Fighters, just again, given how long combos typically are, but given the wording that Riot used here, that you have it at the beginning of the match, I wonder if maybe there's some way to get it back. Okay, so there were a few things that we noticed that weren't called out specifically in the video, so I wanna call those details to your attention so we can learn a little bit more about Project L. Before I do that, just big shout out to my coworker, Danielle Rosen, who went over the video frame by frame and made this analysis possible on such a short time frame. We just mentioned dynamic save, but there's a detail in the video that isn't explicitly pointed out, which is that we see somebody try to use a dynamic save, but it doesn't hit and it actually punishes that character like the game does. It puts you into like a flip out state and there's like a red effect as part of the dynamic save burst. Be careful about timing your dynamic save because it can be countered if you're being too predictable. The video had sections for movement, offense, and defense, but in these sections, the narration was more general design philosophy. Still, we caught some interesting details that we wanna share with you. First is that push block, sometimes called advancing guard, is clearly in the game, and in some cases, it was a massive pushback that still let them punish. We don't know exactly how this will work. It has to be an option with some limits, obviously, and we have seen UI elements in previous videos that looked like, you know, some kind of meter or special resource bar. So that's likely what it will cost, but we don't know that for sure yet. One thing we don't see in this video though is a parry, which it looked like we saw from an Ari in a previous video, so it's not clear if that's still in there. And at 345 in the video, you can see Ari do this little animation that seems to be a dash cancel, and the player uses it to stop their string and grab the blocking echo. You catch that? Here it is again in slow motion. I wonder if this is unique to Ari because I don't think we've seen this animation before. Another thing that this video did is seemingly confirm that there will be multiple levels of supers or maybe multiple gauges that you can spend on different things that look like supers or ultimates or whatever because we've seen multiple different animations for characters like Ari already. Generally, the game so far is looking pretty flat, pretty horizontal. There is a section that mentions that super jump is a movement option. It's not clear if we see that in this video, but if we do, then the super jumps aren't that big. And finally, some miscellaneous character stuff before we move on to talk about the FGC's role in all of this. So, Alawi, we knew she was in the game, but we hadn't really seen any of her kit, and unsurprisingly, now that we have, it looks like it's going to focus around tentacles. She has this little launcher that seems to always spawn a tentacle, and they're definitely going to be helpful for creating some sneaky setups. And it's pretty cool that you get like a big bodied character that's focused on these weird mech ups. It doesn't usually happen that way, and I like it. That's some cool flavor. We got to see Echo use Jinx's flame chomper to set up a combo. The little chompy guy does damage on hit, but then latches on and explodes to help Echo set up a combo. Pretty cool. Jinx also has this scary little flip move that we see a few times. So take a look at this and tell me which side she's coming down on. It's pretty sneaky. As an Akuma player, I approve. We also saw one of the drawbacks to using Echo's Rewind, specifically attacking out of the Rewind, is that it looks like the recovery animation always has him sort of like rev the Z drive, so you get a little bit of a longer recovery. At 420 in the video, nice, uh, there is a different kind of tag that isn't mentioned by the developers. It appears to be a tag launcher, and of course we saw this in another game that wasn't very successful, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. As an aside, Danielle and I were joking that if this game could succeed, it would exercise the damned ghosts of both SFXT and MVCI since both these games didn't really do that well, but they had some great ideas and it looks like there might be a little bit of that DNA in Project L. And I guess that's the last thing I wanna talk about today whether this game can succeed. We've mentioned this in other videos about Project L, but with both Tom and Tony Cannon on board, they've got a great foundation. Like these are two Evo co-founders and they have resumes in the space. So that's a great start. But we also learned from Pat the Flip on Twitter that Riot is teaching the development team internally about what makes fighting games so great. Like they literally have someone teaching them about the genre. Remember, they've hired some veterans, but Riot has never actually made a fighting game before. 
and this is so cool, so incredible to see. In the video, they also did something that I found surprising. They told potential players to find their local fighting game scene and get involved. Finally, for those of you out there looking to get into fighting games for the first time, try finding a local scene in your area. As a reminder, this game is not out yet and it does not seem like it will be out anytime soon. So what does this mean? Hopefully it means that Riot isn't aiming to create some kind of fighting game LCS or something, but instead they're going to support this game from the grassroots starting point and then see where it goes from there, you know, nurture it instead of nationalize it, I guess. They also did something else. They asked FGC veterans to drop some helpful links in the chat. FGC folks, help the new folks out by sharing your links in the comments. The way that Tom Cannon makes this request in the video is so matter of fact, so obvious as if he knows for certain that there's no way that anyone would refuse to do that. Like in some communities, when you haven't even made a game yet, I feel like asking for something like this could be met with some amount of derision or frustration or hostility, but fighting games are different and they've had to be because at the end of the day, They've needed new people since basically forever. So fighting games had to be accommodating and it seems like Riot and the Cannon Brothers obviously understand that. And at least based on what's been shown, there seems to be a lot of excitement and a lot of goodwill in the fighting game community for one of the biggest companies to enter the space in a long time. So we're gonna keep waiting on info for Project L. I just really hope we don't have to wait too much longer. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.